Well, I've got something uh, exciting for you today, uh, something to show you. I have uh, recently been contacted by a guy named Chris Mapp, and Chris Mapp is the uh, newest owner of Flats Cat's Boats. You guys know that I run a Flats Cat everywhere I go. I talk about it all the time. I love my boat. I love it. And he and I have been talking over the last few weeks, and he's invited me to come down to, uh, well, where Flats Cats are made. Uh, so I want to show you around, show you what they've got going on. Uh, we we have been talking quite a bit about some of the the new stuff that is going on with Flats Cat, so I'm going to introduce you to some of that, and uh, introduce you to Chris as well. Uh, stay tuned. Well, I'd like you to uh, to introduce you guys all to Chris and Matt. How are we doing? How are you? <laughs> so, here it is, guys. Here's uh, here's where they're all built. All the boats. Oh, these uh these are the molds here. Two twenty ones and nineteen, and this is the seventeen right here. So those are twenty ones in the back. Twenty one, nineteen, and this uh, this that's is where my boat. That's your boat, right? There. Yeah, seventeen. That's where your boat was born. Yeah, right there. So uh, here is the uh, demo boat here. So it's 24, uh, 21 foot. And uh, this has all the latest changes that we have done to the boat. Uh, we experiment with things all the time. And so uh, this boat is just about ready to go out and hit the water again and do some more testing. Yeah, we are working on it. Beautiful, right? <laughs> No, it really is. That's a sport top, and uh, that top is built by Craig Voss for T tops and more in Port O'Connor. Uh, the upholstery on the boat is all carbon fiber upholstery, and it's called carbon fiber pearl. And uh, basically, the POC upholstery builds that. All of our trailers come from coastline. We do Suzuki or Mercury uh, outboards, but every boat that we do, we, we take a lot of time and effort to get the details right. You'll see the hatches stay open by themselves. We use friction hinges. Our live wells are finished on the inside and they are insulated on the outside. Uh, we use really great seals. We have really good sized hatches. They're not too small, they're not too large, and they're they're very dry. I'm not telling you they're waterproof. Nothing's really waterproof in our world, but they do a really great job. And so uh, uh, this particular flat cap is uh, uh, all composite, as all the new ones are since 2020. We now use a grid system, which you'll see in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the amazing thing about this boat is we now have our fuel tanks under the deck. So we've opened that console up for a lot of room. And uh, it's quite amazing. Yeah, he, he's showing me the uh, fuel tanks. A lot of us that have uh, some of the older boats that have the fuel tanks under the console, that's not the case anymore. If you look under these consoles, they are, uh, they are so well wired and nice and clean. All of the uh, fuel tanks are now in the hole, which is uh, amazing. We'll show you that here in just a minute. But here, I do want to show you these uh, these hatches here. Yeah, they uh, they stay open for you. And they're Keep turning around so when you're weight fishing, yeah, you can stand outside the boat to get to your gear. So here's the uh, inside of the live well. Super nice, nice and clean. Everything's run perfect. I do like it uh, that it is rounded for anybody that knows uh, when you have a rounded live well, if you're uh, somebody that uses bait, it keeps the bait alive longer because the bait doesn't stack up in the corners. So that's uh, that's the reason for rounded live wells. But yeah, so one thing that uh, we were talking about um, is the size of this live well. This live well is 20, 26 inches right now which for all of us, we know uh, as tournament fishermen, we need at least 28 to put in, uh, you know, those tournament sized redfish. So I was talking to Chris about that and I believe they're going to uh, start building those a little bit bigger for all of us tournament guys. So. What he's doing is he's cutting out for the rigging tube right now. So he's just cutting through all the foam to start installing our rigging tube. Our rigging tube actually is all perforated so it doesn't hold any water at all. It will drain into the hole our hull, when this is done, this is a grid system, and it's really well designed. Uh, Jefferson Fiberglass designed this for us in Louisiana. We'll have water panels all the way through this. It goes all the way to the back of the boat, so it will never hold water. 
that the integrity of this grid system allows this boat to not have any flex, or at least minimal flex. It, it adds um, a degree when the boat goes through the water, it just goes through the water. Uh, there's not a lot of vibration, that type of thing. So this was really a game changer us, going from a normal stringer system to a grid system. Then you can see our fuel tanks lay right in this compartment right here, right and left hand side. So this is, uh, this is quite a setup. That's our front casting deck. And when we move to another boat just a minute, you'll see what's actually under that casting deck. Yeah. And then here in the rear compartment where he's uh, putting in the uh, rigging tube, he's fixing to cut out for that. But you can see that the, the boat itself is really weighed up, laid up nice. Everything we use is K300, it's all composite. And uh, this boat is built to take a beating and last literally a lifetime. Yeah, look at it, uh, that stringer system there. That is, uh, and there's the mold for it right there. Oh yeah, yeah, so there's the mold for uh, the stringer system. I mean, this is, I mean, it's just so well put together. Uh, but I'll tell you the biggest game changer for me is these fuel tanks. You got one on each side there uh, being inside the hole. It uh, frees up a lot of space underneath that console. So that is, I mean, this is this is how they're built right here. This is work in progress so it gets a lot more detail than this. Yeah, yeah, that, this is this is just part of the process. It, there's a lot more that goes into it, but I wanted to show you little by little. Here's another one. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit different, but they, yeah. Oh, I do want to show you this. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, that ball over there. So if you look underneath, there's a lot more, a uh, lot more space to hook up, uh, you know, your your chains and, and all of that. I know with mine, uh, I really got to wiggle it in there to like make it fit. So those are a little bit bigger now for uh, all of us. It makes it a lot easier. And it's heavy reinforced at the bow line, and then all the way through the bow, it's reinforced all the way to stringer to remove any flex. But this is where that water is literally drawn in. Yeah. There's a lot of stress right here. This this stops that uh, vibration process by just putting a, a good reinforcement in as well. So there's the live well right there and uh, like I said I've mentioned before uh, making that a little bit bigger so we can fit um, you know redfish in there and if you look here's the actual full console with the live well. Uh, well there's plenty of room. <laughs> so it's getting bigger. Yeah so looks like uh, that one may may get a little bit bigger there but. One of the other things I'd like to show you is the console we put the same K300 material that holds the screw so well as reinforcements, and you'll see it on the finished boat here in just a minute. But no screw stainless will go through this console, unless maybe it's for the burn bar or windshield grab rail. We try and minimize all of that, so we put this block in here because we, we don't want any stainless heads outside from the stainless rust, no matter how good it is. Right. It's just a matter of time. So and you'll see a lot of reinforcement already built into the console. Our console is glass down to the deck. You're not going to get any flexing, and it will last a lifetime. Yeah. So here is uh, the, what is this K? This is the material that we use. It's K300, and uh, we have it in different thicknesses. We primarily use three quarter, but sometimes we do use half and three eighths in other areas to help reinforce or do. And I was uh, showing this piece that a lot of manufacturers use for their deck because they want the boat to be lighter. I'm not looking for a light boat. I want the displacement. Uh, of the hull to uh, create the lift. I'm not looking to lighten it up too much. And the reason why is this perforated material right here does not hold a screw. And a lot of manufacturers, their console shake loose uh, over time or your leaning post becomes loose. It's just not a good material for a deck no matter how much resin you put on there. It's just too perforated. There's just no way it can compare to something like this as solid as a yeah, rock. This, the, like, I mean, it has very little flex. However, this, I mean, yeah. you can see it's it's a completely different type of material and that that's impressive here are really opened up see that that's a big nice wide drain that water oh yeah down. it's just gonna flow right out and we have the steppers over to keep obviously things from going in but this drain really works and it dumps water quickly out of that boat so if you've ever stepped away you know what i'm talking about so i added this to my 17. uh ray right. deck yeah, so I have two hatches there as well on my 17th, um, and I like that a lot. But we did a hole that runs all the way through to the back, 
Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of that. And the reason is, is because I get soft plastics and things that I drop in there. And so then I have to take that off and then like spray it out. Uh, and because it's so low, I can't really put a, a cap on that or like any kind of filter. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to rig something to figure that out. I'm gonna show you something over here. We're into really getting some first class upholstery. This upholstery right here is called Beluga. And I talked about Vicky at PLC Upholstery. She does the diamond stitch, but this is a really hardy, rich material. And this is the same material right here without the diamond stitch. And uh, there's another one we're getting next week. It's called Chill. And what's exciting about the chill material is, it is uh, when it's 100 degrees outside and you go sit down, it will maintain that nice cool temperature. It won't get 100 degrees. And we think for uh, women who like to go fish, wear shorts, wear bikinis, wear bathing suits, or wherever their gear is in the summertime, that that will be a big advantage for them not to, you know, oh, yeah. get hurt when you're sitting down. Yeah, are but nice. uh, these are some amazing materials. These are upgrades from our standard material, but. Uh, the material that goes on a boat is just as important as the boat itself. I agree, yeah. So nice. <laughs> this, is, this is Gina Allison. Gina and Bill started the company way back when. And, uh, and how, how long ago? 1986. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so uh, uh, Gina's still here today. Yeah. And uh, we everything we talk about, we talk boats all day long and back and forth. and. When you call, <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the lady behind the scenes here. <laughs> and, uh, We're gonna take a trip uh, around the property. They got 60 acres here. Where the pet runs all started with Bill back in the day over here and you've seen the ramp this summer took a toll on the water uh, we're all filled with lots of bass and uh really a great location so you're gonna be surprised what you see because this is where all the test runs were done it doesn't look like this is a very big area but uh we're coming over here to the boat ramp and uh we expect these to be filled up by december and it hasn't been used since bill passed away so we've got a uh, the lake management uh, company coming in, a personal friend of mine uh, that's right here in the Richmond Rosenberg area to uh, get rid of the duckweed and a lot of the algae, clean them up and give it a better environment for the fish as well as us being able to run boats again. So here's the boat ramp. And if you pan back, it doesn't look like too big of an area. But let's, uh, let's take a ride here just a minute and see where it really ends up. Yeah. quite a large lake this is where it ends so you have a front lake and you have a big five acre back lake you have to ask yourself what connects them well we'll go take a look so back behind me is the uh back lake uh and what is that five acres five acres. yeah five acre lake and then right here there's a channel and this channel runs all the way down and around this corner here uh, and it runs all the way to the uh, front lake. Now, um, originally they would uh, come and test boats with a boat ramp on the front uh, there. And so they would uh, test boats here and they would run it through here and all of that. And I think that is in the plans for the future to get this all ready for that. spring we'll be, we'll be uh, ready to uh, have enough rain come back in. August was pretty tough, July was pretty tough this year. And then uh, the lake hadn't been used since Bill passed away. so as far as being able to test run. So the goal is by spring, to be able to bring folks in and test run right here. Yeah, yeah so when you come and you buy a boat, um, uh, after the spring really, you can come back here and uh, test the boat out and, and see what it can do. So that's really cool. All right, well, I'm back uh, over here in my storage unit with my uh, Flats Cat. I do want to thank Chris for inviting me out and showing me everything that's new with Flats Cat. I've got to say, I'm really, really impressed. And to be honest, uh, you guys may see me in a new 21 next year. Um, just, I mean, the, the difference in, in, you know, in, in what they've added to that boat, the fuel tanks inside the hull, that's a huge one for me, frees up a room under the console, the new upholstery, the new build quality, the components. I mean, uh, 
there's just a lot uh, of new features on that that um, that I don't have, and you know, I would I would love to get into one of those. I may have to talk to Chris here shortly about uh, what it's going to take to get into a new 21 next year. Um, I, I really do like that boat a lot. On another note, if you guys are interested in uh, Flats Cat, if you want to see what they're capable of, send me a message. I'd be happy to take some of you guys out, uh, show you what these boats are capable of. We'll go out, do some shallow water running, uh, do some fishing, uh, show you what the boat can do. Um, and then from there, you just got to contact Chris, you know, tell him I sent you over there and uh, yeah, he'll get you set up and ready to go in a brand new Flats Cat. And the fact that these uh, you can get a 21 um, at 55,000, which, you know, 19s and 17s or even less. Um, that's 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 just crazy. Uh, I don't think that there's any other boats in that uh, that are capable of what Flats Cats can do uh, in that price range. I mean, this boat here will run in less than two inches of water. It will get up in four inches and, uh, you know, to, to have a price tag uh, for a 21, which is bigger than this at 55,000. That's just insane. But anyway, I do want to thank uh, Chris and everybody over at Flats Cat for treating me well, showing me around. And uh, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to Chris. If you're looking at, to buy a boat, reach out to him. Uh, I do appreciate you watching. Thanks again. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, comment on the video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.